we were constantly in motion shooting this film. It, it was, uh, it's quite a dance with, you know, every, the cameras are handheld, so as we're running and racing down the hall, and the cameras and the, the crew, everyone is in sync. It actually works so beautifully, you know, it's like some ballet, if that's the a right word in this action film. But um, yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty intense. We'd start with this, you know, well-tailored script that Brian wrote, and we'd stay within those boundaries. But um, we would they'd start each day with Paul, and if it was myself and Matt in a scene, or Greg Kinnear, we would just sit and read it through and find that if that scene was the truth for us, for our characters, if it made sense, and, and if it was tracking the story of following this book, and did Matt have enough information, they'd go from one to the next as our hero drives through the story. Um, and uh, we would then, within those boundaries of the script, we'd do a lot of um, improvising and then go come back after lunch or so and nail it down and, and it would be really well scripted and again choreographed with the camera moves. Paul is a phenomenal director. You know, he started in documentary films and that really is, he, I feel like he brings that to, it's what he knows. Um, well, he knows a lot, but that's one of the ways he makes films. So um, it's very generous, and he has this gift of not knowing where we may be going next, but the gift of confidence and calmness throughout, and that we will find it. And because he used to make these films, I think one of his first jobs was making a documentary films assignment on Monday and have it finished product by a Friday to be, you know, go to air. So he's used to working under the gun that like that way. And uh, he brought that along. And he has such amazing uh, a love for actors and um, really uh, understands what it is we do and relies on that and calls that out of us. And it's a nice, nice thing to work with. My character, I play Lori Dane. She's a Wall Street Journal journalist. Um, and she really represents uh, the failure in the media Overall, it could have been any newspaper in the UK or the US or male reporters, female reporters, because there were a lot of inaccuracies printed at that time. Um, so uh, my character gets a really, uh, what she thinks is an amazing source, that WMD are there and there's specific information and she prints it and she doesn't check her facts, uh, check her source. So that's what gets us into this predicament. Um, so that's, uh, as she, uh, it, it's dawning on her that all these sites are coming up empty, she starts to really uh, fear for her career, for herself, for her name, and uh, is looking for the answers herself. You know, was she duped or why did she let herself get to where she has gotten? It's a great, it's, it's a thriller, it's a conspiracy thriller, it's an action thriller. Um, so I, I, I don't know if fear is, is the way, it's more heart pounding, you know. It's, I find it more invigorating and exciting than fearful, you know. Um, well, but then again, I, I find that of the cyclone in Coney Island. <laughs> I find it thrilling and not fearful. So maybe that's, I'm the wrong person to answer that question. <laughs> Matt Damon in this film, uh, you know, he had an extraordinary job to do is to be in charge of, you know, real life soldiers, some who are, you know, had just come from a tour in Iraq and few who are going back after our film. And he has a, an intimidating job of being their commander. And, um, you know, as an actor, you know, all you want to do is really be able to pull it off truthfully. And I know that. He, he did it incredibly well and so convincing. And, and the guys, I think, were, um, would agree. But uh, that was really brave of him to do. Um, yeah, this is their third film together, Paul and Matt. And I think, uh, again, I'm speaking for them, but from what I witnessed, they do have a shorthand that they, uh, that they can communicate in. But yet they let you in and they include you straight away in the scene. Um, they're constantly turning to me and Greg Kinnear and Brendan Gleeson and to add to the scenes. And, um, but they're both, they're both on such the same wavelength as they're figuring out the, the puzzle of this thriller and make sure uh, 
where we need to go is the right place for his character. Um, so they, they both, they don't rest in that sense. They're not going to, they're not comfortable with mediocrity. They're going to, they're going to only go for the best. I, no, I think there are, there, you know, characters like Matt who he, he takes on an assignment. He's, you know, he, his assignment is go to Iraq, uh, you know, with Al Saddam Hussein, get rid of w, a fine WMD, and uh, the search comes up empty. And that particular soldier will then wants to know why. Why am I here? And I think, you know, there maybe the other other part of the military is uh, comfortable with just following orders. That is their job. That is what they are trained for. Um, but we have in Matt's character someone who isn't satisfied with that, and that's what leads the great chase.